Hello students, welcome back to Programming in C Language, myself Srikanth. So in the previous session videos we discussed in detail about various computer memory, right? Uh, like memory hierarchy, memory units, the computer memory uh, in detail we discussed about what internal processor memory like registers and primary storage like RAM. Okay, so it to be discussed about static RAM and dynamic RAM, ROM, different types of ROM, cache memory and virtual memory. The secondary storage is again divided by what? Magnetic disk, optical disk, solid state. We'll discuss these things in the next session. So in this session, we try to concentrate about what? Primary storage, okay? So in the previous session, we discussed in detail about what? Registers, right? See, what is register? What are the different types of computer register like user accessible registers, internal registers, architectural registers, and some other hardware registers we discussed in detail. And coming to the memory, we started for discussing about my primary storage or internal memories. That to be in primary storage, we had discussed in detail. What is primary memory? That to be categorized different types like RAM, ROM, cache memory, and virtual memory. See, I given detailed explanation in the previous video session about RAM. RAM stands for what? Random access memory. See, the user enters any kind of data into the computer system. It moves into what? Primary memory for storage. This type of primary memory is known as what? RAM. So this is a storage capacity. Generally, it is in the form of what? MB and GB. See, RAM looks like this. So several features we discussed and uh, history. Coming to the history, Williams is going to be introduced about the RAM. So we discussed in detail up to here. So in this session, we try to continue with what? Different types of RAM. See, RAM basically categorized by two types. One is called static RAM, another called dynamic RAM. See, what is this a static RAM? The word static indicates that the memory retains its content as long as power remains applied. Unlike what? Dynamic RAM. Okay. So we'll discuss now. See, static RAM looks like this. Acron 8K static RAM. Okay. It represented like this. Okay. So it is attached to the motherboard. See, uh, Access time in RAM is what? Independent of the address. That is, each storage location inside the memory is as easy to reach as other location and takes the same amount of time. Okay. See, the word static indicates what? That the memory retains its contents as long as power remains applied. Unlike what? Dynamic RAM. Simply we can call DRAM. See, DRAM needs generally what? Periodically refreshed. Data are lost when the circuit gets powered down. See, which makes what? Static RAM as a volatile memory. The static RAM consumes what? More power because there are multiple tra multiple transistors are there. Around six transistors need to form a memory cell of what? Static RAM. See, static RAM is what? More expensive and holds what? Less data than what? Dynamic RAM. See, the static RAM looks like this, okay? The static RAM is a type of random access memory that retains its state for data bits or holds data as long as it receives the power. See, it is made up of memory cells and is called a static RAM. See, as it does not need to be refreshed on a regular basis. So I just only explained about what dynamic RAM in dynamic RAM needs periodically refreshing, but in static RAM not required. <coughs> so it is faster than what DRAM. It has a special arrangement of what transistors that makes a flip flop, a type of memory cell. One memory cell stores one bit of data. Most of the modern SRAM, SRAM is what? Static RAM memory. Cells are made up of what? Around six CMOS transistors, but lack of what? Capacitors. The access time in SRAM chips can be as low as what? 10 nanoseconds, where the access time in what? DRAM. DRAM usually retains what? 50 nanoseconds. Okay. So this is about what? Static RAM. See, static RAM indicates what? 
that the memory retains its contents as long as what power remains applied is the volatile memory it consumes what more power because it consists multiple transistors like six transistors there is no any explicit capacitors see usually it uses what flip flop to store each bit okay see sram is faster and more expensive and holds what less data see sram is used for what cpu cache okay see by function wise it categorized what synchronous and asynchronous okay several characteristics of sram like faster last size long life no need to refresh every time used as what cache memory high power consumption it is what somewhat expensive different types of static ram is there non volatile static ram pseudo static ram by transistor type by flip flop type binary static rams and ternary static rams so these are all the different types of static rams are available so coming to the history semiconductor bipolar sram was invented in what 1963 by what robert norman see like uh, mos sram was invented in what 1964 john by john like uh, it was a 64 bit mos okay p channel sram so these are all what various kind of inventions invented by what the history see static ram just you remember it what static is nothing but what the memory retains its contents as long as power remains applied okay so this is about what static ram internal uses what transistors okay the second type is what dynamic ram simply we can call what dram the term dynamic indicates that the memory must be constantly refreshed in static ram there is no memory is not refreshed every time but in case of dynamic ram the memory is going to be what keep on refreshing every time okay because dram loss loss is stored information in a few milliseconds even though its power supply is what on okay it stores information in the form of what charge on a capacitor see which leaks away in a very short time okay therefore its contents must be what periodically refreshed after every 2 milliseconds okay see the dynamic ram consumes what less power and it's what cheaper than what static ram see the several different types of rams are available drams is available like uh, DRAM is nothing but what dynamic RAM is used for what computers main memory like uh, it categorized by what different types like SD RAM synchronous dynamic RAM DDR double data rate synchronous dynamic random access memory it consists different types like DDR2 DDR3 DDR4 DDR5 these are all different types of what DDR RAMs double data rate synchronous dynamic random access memories okay gddr like graphics ddr sd ram okay gddr sd ram is nothing but what graphics related sd ddr sd rams it consists different uh, uh, updated versions like G gddr2 gddr3 gddr4 r5 r5 x r6 r6 x like different types of what graphics related ddr sd rams are available in the market hbm high bandwidth memories see the, these are all what advanced of what these rams different types comes under like fpm dram like fast page mode dram dynamic random access memory like edo dram extended data out dram like bdo dram burst edo dram next sd ram synchronous dram dram is what dynamic random access memory like asynchronous dram ram bus dram cache dram ddrs like different kinds of dynamic rams are available in the market main characteristics of dynamic ram is what needs to be refreshed continuously used as what ram it is smaller in size less power consumption less expensive it is slower as compared to what sram short data lifetime so these are all about different types of dynamic rams like dram ddr2 sd ram ddr4 like 8gb ddr4 this is what different types of what rams 
see some special types uh, i try to discuss some few types like asynchronous dram see this type of dram is not synchronized with the cpu clock so the drawback drawback with this ram is that cpu could not know the extra timing okay extra timing at which the data would be available from the ram on the input output bus here this is the limitation was overcome by the next generation of rams which is known as what synchronous dram sd ram okay so in case of synchronous dram begin to appear in what uh, late 1996 like that see is uh, synchronized with what cpu clock it allowed the cpu or to be precise the memory controller to know the exact clock cycle or timing or the number of cycles after which the data will be available on the bus so the cpu does not need for the memory access and thus the memory read and write speed can be increased see this sd ram is also known as what single data rate ram okay sd ram as data is transferred only at each rising edge of the clock cycle okay so this is about what sd ram the next generation of this synchronous uh, dram is known as what ddr ram dd ram simply we can call ddr ram okay see what is this ddr just only i told double data rate okay random access memory see it is overcome the limitation of what sd ram and was used in what pc memory at the beginning of the uh, year like 2000 okay see simply we can call ddr sd ram ddr ram okay see the data is transferred twice ddr means what double data rate means what the during the the data is going to be transferred twice during what each clock cycle but in sd ram it going to be generating what one right but in case of ddr ram data is transferred twice during each clock cycle during the positive edge we can call rising edge and the negative edge we can call what falling edge of the cycle so it is known as what double data rate sd ram so again this uh, ddr ram categorized what different types ddr2 ddr3 ddr4 and ddr5 okay these are all the various versions are available in what in the market okay these are all different types of dynamic ram okay see this is about static ram and dynamic ram see dynamic ram must be periodically refreshed okay see sometimes there is a chance to ask what is the difference between what s ram and d ram static ram and dynamic ram see some differences like it does not require any refreshing circuit in static ram but come to dynamic ram must be refreshed otherwise content will be lost it is more expensive why because it consists six transistors it is less expensive it is high speed but it is low speed it is lower in bit density but it has what more bits of storage in a single integrated circuit so it internally uses what l1 l2 cache memory is it used in what main memory so that's what in the memory hierarchy i explained clearly this is static ram s ram comes under what cache memory but this dynamic ram comes under what main memory okay so static ram has less storage capacity but dynamic ram obviously comparing to cache it has more storage capacity see here do not need extra charges for what storing data but here required what additional power supply to what store data here it uses what transistors and latches like flip flops but here using what dynamic Ram capacitors. So it uses what nearly six transistors in one block of memory, but it is uses what one transistor in what one block of memory. It generates what more heat. It generates what less heat. S RAM is on chip memory. It needs what small access time, but is of what chip memory? That means it needs what large access time. But I told you, comparing to cache memory, the next level memory is what. this main memory that is called dram dynamic ram that's what access time somewhat it takes more comparing to what s ram the sizes ranges what in the form of what mbs but here the sizes ranges in the form of what mbs as well as what gbs see this is a major difference between what s ram and dynamic ram see overall i am telling that see static memory as what it does not need to be refreshed periodically but dynamic ram must be required what refreshed otherwise data is going to be lost see its memory cell is what made up of what six transistors in a static ram 
okay but coming to dynamic ram its memory cell is made up of one transistor and one capacitor see in static ram it is more expensive than what dram and is located on what processors processors or between a processor and a main memory but coming to dynamic ram it is less expensive than what sram and is mostly located on the what motherboard see in sram it has a lower access time like example you can take 10 nanoseconds so it is faster than what dram but coming to this dynamic ram it has a higher access time more than 50 nanoseconds so it is slower than what sram it stores information in what uh, like uh, the latching circuitry like flip flop i told right it requires regular power supply so it consumes what more power but in case of our uh, here the information is going to be each bit of data is stored in a separate capacitors within a integrated circuit so it consumes what less power in a bit it is faster than what dram as it memory cells do not need to be refreshed but in case of what here it is not as fast as what sram as its memory cells are what refreshed continuously but still it is used in what motherboards because it is cheaper to manufacture and requires what less space but here its cycle time in short as it does not need to be paused between what access and refreshes but here its cycle time is what more than the sram cycle time okay see this is about what differences major differences between what static and dynamic rams okay see this is about what is static ram what is dynamic ram see next type of main memory primary memory is called what rom rom also stands for what read only memory okay rom is a built in computer memory also known as what firmware okay here firmware is nothing but what group of hardware and software that instructions that are required all the time in the system for running the computer are stored in the rom simply remember rom stores those instructions which are required to start a computer this operation referred to as what bootstrap okay don't worry what is this booting bootstrap we'll discuss in the in detail in what it does okay but just remember whatever the instructions required to load your operating system that operating system instructions are going to be stored in what rom once you are switch on your computer once you started that booting process is going to be happen booting process is nothing but here what reading the instructions stored from the rom whatever the instructions required to open your operating system that's what the uh, simply i can tell rom is used for what uh, that built in instructions which are required to start a computer this operations is refers to as what boot strap we can call it see the major characteristics of roms you come here it consists of small chip located near cpu on the motherboard see it is the read only memory user can only read the instructions when but cannot write it into uh, rom read only memory okay see rom is what non volatile in nature but ram is what volatile that is temporary ram is temporary but rom is what non volatile means uh, whatever the instructions you are going to be stored in the rom that is what permanently stored okay data does not get erased even computer power is what switched off rom chips are not only used in the computers but also in other electronic items like some other machines like washing machines microwave ovens and so on okay different types of electronic machines also they are using rom chips so instructions that are stored in the rom execute as soon as the computer is what switched on okay so memory organization rom is exactly the same as that of what ram see rom chips are used not only in computers i told you right many electronic items there you can use it using also like calculators washing machines microwaves and so on see in rom it is not possible to randomly select the store the information see in rom it cannot be store and access randomly okay right so this is about what basic introduction about what what is rom see basically it is what discrete component rom ibm used capacitors read only storage cross you can call it and tros transform read only storage to store micro code for the system 360 models so another one is a solid state rom 
semiconductor technology is going to be introduced the features of rom like it is read only memory and it is what non volatile in nature so it is attached to the motherboard why majorly we are using for this rom see when uh, you want to like the computer want to boot that instructions the booting process is going to be majorly done with what this rom okay even we are going to be switch off the computer also there is no loss of data so when you switch on the system okay when switch on your computer system all the instructions instructions stored in the rom loaded and get executed automatically and makes the system ready to load the operating system in the memory see that process is also called booting process okay so this is about what rom rom again categorized by different types basically p rom ep rom eep rom m rom and flash rom m rom stands for what mask rom P ROM stands for what? Programmable Read Only Memory. EP ROM stands for what? Erasable Programmable Read Only Memory. EEP ROM stands for what? Electrically Erasable Programmable Read Only Memory. See and another one called Flash ROM. Okay. So this is advanced level of what? ROM. These are all the various different types of ROMs available in the market. Okay. See coming to the M ROM. See, all are familiar about this word, right? M ROM, mask, mask ROM. Simply, we can call what M ROM is nothing but what mask ROM. See what what is M ROM? See, it is the oldest type of read-only memory. It has become what obsolete, so it is not used anywhere in the current. Nowadays, we are not using this M M ROM. Okay, it is a hardware memory device in which programs and instructions are stored at the time of what manufacturing by the manufacturer so it is programmed during the manufacturing process and cannot be modified reprogrammed or erased later understood the word so mrom is what it is the oldest one old, oldest read only memory okay see this hardware hardware memory device in which programs are and instructions are stored at the time of what manufacturing by the manufacturer so it is programmed during the manufacturing process only after that it cannot be modified reprogrammed or erased later okay so mrom chips are made up of what integrated circuits chips sends a current through a particular input output pathway determine the location of users among the rows and the columns on the chip the current has to pass along a fuse enabled path so it can return only via the output the manufacturer chooses so this is the reason the rewriting and any other modification is not possible see so simply we can call it is impossible in the memory we cannot modify it we cannot do any kind of alterations we cannot erase it in a m rom we can simply call what mask rom okay so next one is what p rom p rom stands for what? programmable read only memories see what is this p rom see it is also the read only memory like rom the only difference between rom and prom is what that the instructions in rom are designed by the manufacturer just only i told right that m rom of the computer whereas in prom the instructions are programmed by the user itself see that's what the name is clearly telling about what prom programmable read only memory instructions are programmed by the user himself according to his requirements see prom is also known as what one time programmable non volatile memory so in prom user can design the instructions only for once he cannot change the instructions later whenever required understood he can only change only once but he cannot modify any number of times the major disadvantage of prom is that a shock of electricity can easily cause fuses in what rom to burn out there by corrupting the prom okay see that is the one major drawback but using prom programmable read only memory once we can able to erase it uh, erased by what programmer okay 
see the main uses it is used in what generally like uh, cell phones video games consoles medical devices like rfid tags and somewhere okay it is used by programmable read only memory is coming to history this programmable read only memory prom invented by what like uh, wen sing so in 1956 okay like metal oxide semiconductor field affected transistors mosfet invented it what bell labs in 1959 okay see p rom is a blank version of what rom it is manufactured as blank memory and programmed after manufacturing so we can say that it is kept blank at the time of manufacturing you can purchase and then program it once using a special tool called a programmer okay so that's more than enough about prom next ep rom ep rom stands for what erasable programmable read only memory see this p rom is not a flexible memory right as the instruction in it cannot be changed but in ep rom is designed to overcome the drawbacks of what p rom See in EP ROM, the user can program the instructions himself according to his requirement, and later on he can also erase the instructions by using what ultraviolet rays, UV rays. Okay, he can also erase it that instruction by using what UV rays, ultraviolet rays, and reprogram the new instructions in it. See so while the contents are being written in EP ROM, user cannot read any information. so in ep rom chips are used for what research and development operations because there are regular changes in requirements due to testing of various computer systems okay coming to history like dow from an of intel inventing erasable programmable read only memory ep rom in uh, around 1970 simply i mentioned here 1971 okay see you need to understand here ep rom is nothing but what the user can program the instructions himself according to his requirements and later on he can also erase the instructions by using what uv rays and reprogram the new instructions in it okay the main uses what it is used in some microcontrollers to store program like some versions of intel 8048 and some other versions okay so this is about what ep rom and uh, next one is what electrically erasable and programmable read only memory eep rom see it is also the read only memory and user can program reprogram the instructions according to his requirement but here the instructions will be reprogrammed through what special electrical pulses okay see eep rom such as flash memory allow the entire rom to be electrically erased then written to the without taking them out of the computer see in ep rom user can electrically erase a portion of the content of the rom this is very important situation where minor changes to the rom contents are needed okay see this uh, this rom is a type of read only memory that can be erased and reprogrammed repeatedly up to what 10000 times so it is also known as what flash eep rom as it is similar to what flash memory so it is erased and reprogrammed electrically without using what uv light so access time is what between 45 around 45 and 200 nanoseconds okay the data in this memory is written or erased one byte at a time byte per byte whereas in flash memory data is written and erased in what blocks so it is faster than what eep rom see it is used for storing a small amount of data in computer and electronic systems and devices such as circuit boards best examples yeah it is used as generally the bios of a computer is stored in this memory okay so this is about what eep rom the next one is called flash rom it is an advanced version of what eep rom it stores information in a arrangement or array of memory cells made from what floating gate transistors the advantage of using this memory is that you can delete or write blocks of data around 5 12 bytes at a particular time whereas in eep rom you can delete or write only one byte of data at a time so this memory is what 
faster than eep rom so it can be reprogrammed without re removing it from the computer see its the access time is what very high around 45 to 90 nanoseconds it is also highly durable as it can bear high temperature and intense pressure so the main uses it is used for what storage and transferring the data between a personal computer and a digital devices so it is used in what usb flash drives mp3 players see so digital cameras see like modems and solid state drives ssds the bios of many modern computers are stored on a flash memory chip called what flash bios so these are all what different types of what roms so we discussed in detail about roms m rom mask rom programmable read only memory p rom ep rom eep rom and flash ram okay see next uh, we try to discuss immediately about what another primary memory is called cache memory also i told internal memory see this caching is a process of what storing and accessing data from a cache memory the processor access the main memory to read the instructions the speed at which the processor executes the instructions is much faster than the speed at which the instructions are transferred from the main memory see now in order to make it compatible a small very high speed memory is used between the main memory to the cpu like main memory is nothing but what ram and processor like so it going to be represented so cpu not required to uh, visit every time for this main memory for executing set of instructions that uh, recent instructions are going to be stored in what cache memory cpu instead of visiting every time for ram it going to be checking first in the cache memory if it is available it, there only it going to be process it executes it that is the main advantage for using what cache memory cache memory is what small fast and expensive type of storage that is placed between the cpu and the main memory the cpu transfers the instructions from what the cache memory towards what the its processing area at the very high speed thus it improves the processing speed okay the advantage of cache memory is that the cpu does not have to use the motherboard system bus for data transfer see whenever data must be passed through the system bus the data transfer speed slows to the motherboard's capability the cpu can process data much faster by avoiding the what this bottleneck created by the system bus so this is about what cache memory okay see this cache memory is not addressable by the user of the computer system so its purpose is to look ahead and to provide the cpu with what currently needed information so see cache memory makes main memory appears to be faster and larger than it reality it's really easy like simply we can tell okay it is very expensive as compared to the main memory and hence its size is normally very small so around like 4 mb after it, generally it is in the form of bits bytes and mb so maximum gps okay the main advantage is cache memory is faster than what main memory it consumes what less access time as compared to what main memory it stores a program that can be executed within a short period of time it stores data for what temporary use still it is what volatile memory only once power is off data is going to be lost so coming to disadvantage cache memory has limited capacity and is what expensive so this is about what cache memory so the last type of memory is what uh, virtual memory see so is it to process large amount of data see when the computer is to process a large amount of data sometimes the size of main memory or ram becomes what inadequate or not sufficient to store the data to work on this problem this virtual memory is going to be introduced okay see when the processor is going to be doing some process in the main memory but memory is not sufficient that time it going to be depends upon what secondary storage devices like hard disk or different types of secondary storage drives there it going to be created one separate memory is called virtual memory so without without interrupting it going to be continuing this process execution okay so in this case operating system approaches to the secondary storage called what hard disk and borrows the required amount of memory from it and utilizes so it is a main memory or ram for what processing the 
data this borrowed or shared memory is called what virtual memory simply you can remember here borrowing or getting sharing the memory is called what virtual memory see it is used the system allows a user to carry on working without worrying about the availability of data storage or memory sat saturation see it is often addressed as logical memory and allows used to access a large volume of memory so allowing them to use what more application simultaneously so this is about complete Uh, primary memories we are going to be discussed okay so the time is running out okay just i brush up today we discussed in detail about this memories uh, see observe in the computer memory we discussed in detail about primary storage about ram and rom cache and uh, virtual memories that to be what internal process memories like registers ram like sram and dram rom like m rom p rom ep rom eep rom flash rom and cache memory and virtual memory so this is what in detailed explanation about what memories that to be what primary memories we'll discuss in detail in the next sessions about what secondary memories okay yeah that's it for the today session so if you like my videos okay make it like if you are not subscribed kindly subscribe my videos for more updated concepts in the computer fundamentals and programming in c language okay thank you for watching my videos thank you all